Vegas, the city that never sleeps. Best entertainment in the world. So much to see, so much to do. And what an incredible round one we just had. Paul Casey doing his thing, HB3 with a big day. Everyone is cold here in Vegas. But everyone's excited and we're here to chat about it. A perfect day one, if you ask me. Welcome to Club 54 post round show. We're gonna get right into it with all the fun right here, live in Las Vegas. Welcome to Club 54 post round show. I'm your host, Christian Crosby, and joining me in this cold is the lovely Live Golf commentator, Sue Ann Hang. Sue Ann, thank you so much for joining me in this cold. It's actually, to be honest, it's not that bad now because we have the sunlight on us right well, now. Well, listen, I just spent the last six <laughs> hours in the cold, and uh, you know, don't say I don't do anything for you. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate it, Sue Ann. Uh, how, how, what, do you have any tactics before we get into this? in the cold like what keeps you warm out there what are you doing how layers, do you do it <laughs> layers plenty of layers and uh some hand warmers in my pocket actually but you know it's one of those things where you feel bad for the golfers out here right it is oh, difficult man. to to try and swing the club in this type of temperature i mean some of them are more used to it than others uh depending on, on where you grew up playing obviously the europeans are probably more used to it than the americans sure. but yeah it is a, a tough day it's windy out there it's it's cold it's no fun but I Good golf today, it though. Like a lot of great golf. It was so hard to follow. Everyone was doing well today. So yeah. I want to talk about it. You had a chance to follow three guys mm -hmm. today, one of them being John Rahm. Now, he had a day maybe he wasn't hoping to have, but I want to know some of your insights from today following him around. Yeah, it was a heavy, heavyweight group that I had. Eight majors between all of them. Five belongs to Brooks. Um, but John today he just didn't have his best. You know, he felt just everything felt a little off timing was a little off with his swing uh, it wasn't quite hitting the driver as well as we saw him last week ball striking wasn't quite on point didn't make as many putts but still manage an under par round it's just what good players like himself do they just hang tight they get a number out there try and get under par um, and and not pull too far away from the lead yeah so we're gonna actually look at some of these highlights you were also with brooks today mm -hmm. and so something happened with him we're looking at john here some of the highlights from today a little struggle um did, was there anything else you noticed that was going on maybe was it just would you say an off day um, no. obviously for a, a normal golfer this is a great day right but yeah. for john um wh what did you notice with this you know, it's just, look, it's a quick turnaround from Mexico, right? And a massive temperature change. The driving range is not as uh, big in terms of access to warm up and practice. He can't really hit drivers uh, at this driving range. I don't know if maybe that played a part into his mindset. Maybe he wasn't as comfortable with his driver today. Uh, but this is him here. Uh, beautiful shot there. Yeah, and, that's, and that's beautiful right there. Yeah, he's, I mean, he look, he pulled together a great round of golf as he would. He's very impressive and um, stayed very calm. Seemed pretty happy and relaxed yeah. out there, actually. I was, I was just about to ask his spirits. How was his uh, morale after? It seemed like he was totally fine. Yeah, he was. I mean, look, you can't play great all the time, right? And, and yeah. for these guys, when you don't have your best on the day you just try and grind it out get the best score you can and then move on work on the stuff that you need to work on i'm sure he's probably at the driving range or maybe on the putting green <laughs> right now and yeah right now and trying to <laughs> just sharpen things up again for tomorrow and that's what you do so you're with brooks kepka as well his team is doing great right now yeah uh, individually what, what did you see from brooks something happened today you mentioned to me off camera that's right i mean he he unfortunately had his driver crack overnight and so he put an old driver in today with, I guess, a shaft that isn't suitable for him. Uh, as I mentioned, the driving range here, you're not able to hit drivers because of how, how small it is. Yeah. Uh, so he wasn't able to try it out. And so he took it out, played it with the first three holes and was like, nope, he missed <laughs> all of them right. And was like, never seen it after the third hole. So um, three woods for him. Obviously that plays a huge disadvantage uh, especially into the par fives uh, but you know he still played a great round you know and 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 these things happen they happen in the game of golf and you just have to kind of go through it decide that okay this is what's going to happen i'm going to hit three woods be prepared to hit longer irons into into holes be more patient with yourself and it seems like that's what he did today took the opportunities when he can and just played smart when he couldn't definitely got to have that mental resilience let's yeah. take a look at some clips from brooks day today uh hopefully will we see you in the background somewhere soon where, where are <laughs> you sure. at over here hiding <laughs> hiding Shivering in the vegas cold <laughs> now this is a shot on the fourth yeah. oh. 
Well, it's a great way to open up That's his round. Beautiful right there. And, and this is at four, right? Yeah. Curling That's... left to right putt for a birdie here. That was very pretty to watch. That's I think I was standing behind said. him there. <laughs> There you go. Uh, this, was that. A, this was a great looking shot in the air. I thought he was going to hold it for a second. He's <laughs> right at it. So good. That is that is phenomenal. Yeah. That's so cool you get to follow these guys. Bryson DeChambeau. Let's, let's talk about Bryson. He was the third player you followed today. Mm -hmm. Any cool insight that you have for any of the golf geeks out there that want to know? I mean, he's got so much information in that brain of his. <laughs> um, he's very passionate about the game of golf. He's very passionate about growing it as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I spoke to him on hang time and he's very passionate about bringing a younger audience, making the sport more accessible for people. Um, and that's what he, he wants his legacy to be. You know, that's what he wants to, to leave the game of golf, knowing that he grew the game. Uh, but he's he's a talented player. Look, today he just didn't have his wedge game on point. Um, I was tucking it left for a few of them. And with his length, especially on a golf course like this, you yeah. would hope that he would take full advantage of that. And I think he said that to me in his post round interview when I talked to him on the first green. He said he just didn't have his wedge on, on point. But he's also very surprised that the lead isn't as far ahead as he thought that it was going to be at the start of today. Right. He said he saw a 59 out here. He still sees a 59 uh, that, that's possible out here. And look, it wouldn't surprise me if. He goes out there and shoots 59 tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, I, I want to dive more into your chat with him. You also did a hang time segment with him, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But first, let's look at some highlights from today. Got to get the highlights, y'all. All right, from Bryson DeChambeau, here we go. And uh, always love uh, some commentary from Sue Ann. Look at, look at this. Yeah, this is a long range here on the 15th down this hill, curling putt. There you go, look at so that. So well judged. This is his birdie opportunity on the 17th. Look at that. Wasn't making any putts all day. <laughs> And then Came started making that towards the end. Right yeah, there. that's right. All right, so we mentioned hang time. Mm -hmm. We know you had some time with him. And I remember you, you mentioned just earlier, he's really big into growing the game. I remember watching this segment and just hearing about how much he wants to grow on social media and just expand the game to people who may not know a lick of thing about golf. So <laughs> I'm excited to see it. Take this out. Check this out. It's a clip from hang time. What's up? We're here at Las Vegas Country Club for this week's Live Golf event. I am just making my way to the 10th tee to meet up with captain of Crushes GC, Bryson DeChambeau. Let's go. Well, Bryson, it's been a long off season, but you were so busy um, yeah. pumping out content for your YouTube channel. What's your goal for that? Uh, brand awareness, growing uh, fan base of uh, hopefully not only just the Crushers and myself, but, mm -hmm. but live in general. I want people to realize who I truly am and hopefully we can provide some great entertainment and great content for people to enjoy. Well, what's the true you? Th this is, for so long I was presented as this scientist sort of person. The problem is that I have a lot more. I'm deeper than that. Yeah. And I'm very emotional, as people have seen before. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a good thing. I, I'm passionate. I care about the game. I care about growing the game. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to get from 100 million golfers to 150 million golfers. And that's, that's the goal, just growing it and creating great viral content, fun content that people can enjoy worldwide. Make sure you guys check out uh, Hang Time with Sue Ann. That is a great clip there uh, that we shared, and there's more. That's not it. There's a whole bunch of it with Bryson, so make sure you guys tune into that. We're in Vegas, <laughs> and we are out in the cold right now. Big thanks to Sue Ann Hang. Stick around for more. We're going to talk some more go golf with some special guests. Stay tuned. Vegas, baby. Come on. Man, I'm pumped. It's party city, you know? I think it's gonna be really cool to, to showcase the talent in a place like that. Yeah, I mean, I think Vegas could be unbelievable. Being so close to the Strip, so many people are in town. I'm definitely very excited about that. Live golf to Las Vegas with the Super Bowl is one of the best things that we could have done. Those fans are the same fans that would really enjoy and appreciate what Live Golf has to offer.
We're going to Las Vegas Country Club. It's a golf course that I really like. You know, it's in my hometown, right on the strip. It'll be popping. Very excited about playing out of home because my record at home is pretty good. Oh, yeah, I think it could be at a lot of people. It could get noisy. Vegas, Super Bowl weekend. Really won't get any better than that. As you can see, a whole lot of people are excited out here in Vegas. The social media is going crazy. Las Vegas showing out, y'all, from Smash GC. I mean, look at the crowd. It's it's exciting. You guys, I wish you guys were here who are tuning in. The fans are crazy, y'all. I'm just going to keep it 100 with you. <laughs> from Bubba Watson, when in Vegas, you go see the Golden Knights. Looks like they had a good time there at the game. Got to make my way out there. Pretty cool hearing fans chanting for Danny Lee in Vegas. Hashtag live golf. Keep the tweets coming, guys. We love them and we'll throw them on the show. Uh, but let's get back to the action here in Las Vegas. Club 54 post round show. I'm your host, Christian Crosby, and we have some special guests with us from Legion 13 coming up next. All right, and joining us here from Legion 13, Caleb Surratt, and of course, my OG favorite, Jerry Fultz. I'm freezing, and he played in it's... short sleeves today. <laughs> Kid's tougher than me. Caleb, thanks so much yeah. for joining us today. Yeah, no um, problem. Super excited to chat to you. My first question to you is, how has your experience been at Live so far? You have had so much going on. Overall, how's the experience yep. been for you? Yeah, there's, look, there's a lot of moving parts to, to deal with, right? Especially when it's all catching you by surprise, right? It's just... You go from like having a really, really calm life with, you know, family and friends and in college and enjoying it to like everything in the world coming at you so fast. So, uh, you know, the experience has been on un a bit. The experience has been unbelievable, but what's been more unbelievable is having like an amazing team out here around me to, to be able to help with all to that. To say the least. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, well, you had uh, another stellar round, just like you finished last week. You started off strong again today. Let's take a look at some of your highlights from today's round. Starting, where oh. we got him? You, you got the rundown here, uh, Christian. Caleb, take us through here, uh, these moments right here. This is. Yeah, I had a uh, mud ball in the woods. I hit a bad tee shot and punched it out of the front. And I'm not usually a chip-in guy, but blind squirrel found a nut, I guess. Yeah, but you you spent a little time with uh, before the season started when you were when you signed with John Rahm uh, with him and he showed you a few new shots. He did, you? yeah. Well, my my uh, <laughs> my short game was very limited before some of that, so um, <laughs> I've learned a lot from him already. Now, what's going through your mind on, on this one right here? This is at two. Yeah, I'm just you know I'm just kind of doing my thing, right? Like I'm sticking to the same stuff, you know, I'm sticking to my same plan. I'm not trying to change anything about my golf. And, uh, you know, it's, if I play well, it's going to add up here too, I think. So. What, would you, what would you say you've learned the most in your short time here with John and the team? Right. What would yeah. You say? Just how good, like the biggest thing I've learned is just a lot of how great the players are, right? Like, of course you have your, you have your top, your top guys, right? You have your ROM, you have your DJ, you have your, you're Cam Smith and Bryson, but like, you know, you know, nobody talks about all the other guys that played on the PGA Tour forever, right? So right. it's it's super deep, and you know, it's very easy to have an average day, right, and get past. Um, it, it's not it's it's not just top heavy. That's one thing I've learned. So I didn't expect that coming out here. So everybody's unbelievable and uh, good to learn from. C couldn't agree more. Yeah. You have a you have a great captain in John Rahm, but you also yeah. have a great coach in your college coach in Brennan Webb, and he gave you some advice uh, before this when you made the decision to do this. And, and he said, always remember, no matter what everybody tells you, that Caleb Surratt is good enough to be there. That's it, yeah. Don't try and listen to too many people. And how is that treating you so far? Yeah. You know, one thing that we've talked about a little bit is like, it, it's it's great to be able to learn, right? And and to, um, you know, ask, ask all the guys that have so much experience questions. But at the same time, like, I find myself, the more questions I ask, the more I feel like I'm subconsciously making myself feel unprepared. And I, I'm trying to convince myself that I am prepared to be out here. I am prepared to learn. Um, but, you know, it's it's been crazy. I'm still learning as I go. You know, I really am. This is only week two of, of a lot, so. Your, your friends and, and teammates just a couple weeks ago, they're a little warmer than we are right now. They're <laughs> they down are, in, they're Puerto in Puerto Rico. Rico yeah. And they're uh, gathered around <laughs> watching you on their phones, on their devices. They got a little triangle. Oh, that's cool. Look yeah. at that. That's super cool. Pretty cool. And you want to talk here. about just the dialogue you've had with some of your friends ever since you've joined Live and, and some of the conversations you've been able to have with them. 
You want to yeah. chat about that a little bit? Yeah, we, look, my teammates and, and friends have all been in great support of everything, right? Like, uh, it was a big team decision coming here, and, um, you know, I couldn't be more pleased with uh, that decision and, and everybody's support around me. So they're, they're still my best friends. You know, nothing's changed. Well, we actually, uh, I think we have something special. We from... might have orchestrated something. We here. got yeah, something, Jerry, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, yeah. let's take a look. Take a look at the screen. Hey, Rat, we're here at the airport in Puerto Rico. Uh, I just realized I have your laptop in my backpack. It's, it's not like you need it anymore, but like when you get back to Knoxville, I have it. Hey, what's up, Caleb? Hope everything's going well in Las Vegas, but we're finally here in Puerto Rico, and I think it's time that I take over number one, and I appreciate everything you've done. What's up, Rat? We just got to Puerto Rico. We miss you. Uh, it was nice getting to the airport this morning and not having to go back because you left your driver's license or wallet or whatever it may have been. There was uh, there was no lies in any of that. That's all um, past experiences. <laughs> That's incredible, Caleb. Thank you yeah, so no much problem. for your time. Thanks for no joining problem. us in this post round show, uh, and the best of luck to you. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, guys. Keep up the great yeah. work. All right, Thanks and here's some me. tweets on the social coming in about you, Caleb. Phenom written all over him. Impressive, and only at 19 years old. You're good to go. I uh, gotta love that. The fans are definitely going crazy. I, I love talking about Caleb to to Jerry. Um, just watching him in Mayakoba and the resilience he has at such a young age, absolutely impressive. Also, make sure you guys are throwing in some tweets, some social media action. We are glad to take some of the social media action there. Um, Jerry, thanks for joining me in the post. I want to talk to you a little bit. Let's about... talk about my prediction earlier. You put me on the line, remember? <laughs> I, did, yeah, I, I think the aces are right there, aren't they? Uh, they came in hot, too. I, I believe think. they're right there. Absolutely. It was yeah. almost like every member of four aces in the first three uh, yeah. three holes were but at the top of the Just list. to show you how big of an expert I am, the Team Stinger was the one I picked in the Fantasy League. Yes. They are last. It's okay, Jerry. Last. It's okay, Jerry. You can't always be right. We're going to take right. a look at Smash highlights. Let's take a look at Smash GC. All right, Jerry, I would love to, to hear some That's of your input J here. Jason Kokrak yeah. right there. Just a, he's just a quiet, quiet uh, assassin, if you will. He plays so well so often. He's about as solid as a teammate as you'd ever want. And there's no course that doesn't suit him with his power. I mean, what? What does it take to just consistently show up like this? A bulldog mentality and a laissez-faire attitude that you don't really care when things go bad. Now, here is the guy that's going to make the difference if Smash contends for the team title this season uh, because he didn't have a good season last season. There was a lot of talk as he passed his primes. Do you have any good golf left in him? All that matters is what Grant McDowell thinks, and he believes he still has great golf ahead of him. And, uh, and Brooks Kepka believed in him as well to, to add him as the final member of that team for 2024. It's so fun watching this team. Uh, what would you say you would see uh, now that we're we're kind of scaling back about predictions? <laughs> oh, what do you? What's the future you see for these well, guys? Smash is my, Smash was uh, Smash and Crushers were my predictions for the year. I'm a Smash guy, so they uh, they're my predictions for the year. But like I said, a lot of it is how Graham McDowell does this year, and a lot of people have a re are are buying the stock now and then selling it later. Well, we've been talking about Graham McDowell and our very own Rachel Drummond is over with GMAC right now. Check it out. Hello, GMAC. Great round. Four under par, five birdies. We're going to look through some of your putts today. Here we go on the B-roll. This is going to give you all the positive vibes for tomorrow. <laughs> right, let's get the B-roll going. Kind of a funny day in the greens today a little bit. I kind of hold a few that I shouldn't have hold and I missed a few that I definitely should have hold but um that's yeah, golf true. that's true I'm not I'm not sure true. why I sound so surprised sure sound so um but I mean obviously looking at the uh, looking at the highlights there obviously a lot of putts going in first and foremost these greens are ultra pure here at Vegas Country Club I mean the golf course in great shape um good speed the greens Good speed. The greens are good speed, and, and uh, you know, you know you, like, like I say, say you, you can, can see, see there's a, some, some of the guys making putts. So, so um, you know, I feel like I left a few out there in the greens. So um, definitely got a little bit of work to do as I move into tomorrow. Let's have a look. Let's okay. Look some of the makes. There's your name and likes. There we go. Here we go. First one of the day. Yeah. Yeah, like I say, I mean the greens were a nice speed. So you know, you really. Quite, quite a lot, a lot of grain in them as well. Um, so you really had to use the grain to try and feel the reeds. This is 12 hole. 
One of the things I've noticed about these is how good your proximity was. You were hitting it close. Yeah, I hit it. Actually, my iron play was, was, was pretty on point all day. And, I, and like I said, kind of a second ago, I felt like I made a couple of these that I sort of nearly shouldn't have made. And then I missed probably three or four kind of inside eight feet that I felt like I should have made. I actually finished off by missing from about two feet on my last hole today. But, um, you know, they are, they're all secure. Cup. Ultra that pure. one's center um, cup. How much did Ken help you on those greens? You know, it's funny, Kenny. Kenny typically doesn't really read the greens much for me. Um, Let's have a little but, look. Uh, I got him to help me on the greens today, and you know what? He was actually he was on form. He's on form. Typically, I give Kenny my caddy. I'll give him a little look at it. You know, early on in the, in the week, I'll let him read a couple, and I'll just typically he just gets benched. That's him done for the for the rest of the weekend, Early and he gets just to hang out. But. Um, you know, I felt like I wasn't seeing them super well early on in the run today, so I kind of pulled Ken in, and I felt like he was seeing them really well. So that kind of helps me commit to my lines, commit to my reads. But, you know, one of the big things we kind of worked on in practice a couple of days ago, I really felt like last week in Mayakoba, I struggled on my left riders a little bit. And something I've been working on my putting is I've been kind of setting my body first to the line and then setting my, the putter head second. And I felt like on my right lefters, I was really aligning myself very well. But for some reason, on my left right putts, I didn't feel like I was lined up very well. So we did a bit of work on it a couple of days ago, and I felt like my lower body was very open, and my upper body was kind of shut. So I wasn't seeing down the line very well. And you know, alignment and setup, as you know, uh, is so key to how you how you align the putter head. If you're if you're in great position. You know, you can look down that line and align the putter head really well. But if you get like out of shape, your eyes and the putter head are just not kind of in sync and you don't really align the putter head very well. So something I worked on was really trying to trying to set the putter head down first on my line, make sure I get my lower body a little bit more shut, and then just balance up my upper body. And I really felt like that helped me today on my on my left riders. And that is all routine you're talking about there, GMAC. How important is routine in putting? Yeah, routine's huge in putting. You know, I, you know, we were talking about putters. I mean, I've been using this same putter for actually 18 years. Um, you know, Odyssey pop the face out and pop a new one in every now and again. But um, you know, for me, you know, putting's been one of the more consistent parts of my game for the last 15 years. And routine's really important. You know, like for me, I'll talk you through my routine real quick. But uh, you know, back here, I nearly feel like. I'm trying to visualize the pot, I'm trying to visualize speed because obviously, you know, you can't have a read without speed, um, you know, so I, sometimes I'll come back here, I'll nearly kind of feel like I'm throwing the ball down the line, I'm trying to see, I kind of put in curves, I, I'm not really a guy, sometimes if you ask me on a breaking pot where I was aimed, I, I really wouldn't know sometimes, but I'm, because I, I see the curve and I see kind of where the ball enters the hole, so like here, I'm seeing this pot entering kind of, Seven, seven, seven thirty on the clock face, if you like, and then I try and just match my, you know, come, come here, set the putter head to match that entry point of the hole, feel my speed. So I look at the pot, I look at the hole. Something I'm trying to teach my little seven-year-old boy at the minute, you know, when he's having his practice strokes, the target tells you everything you need to know. So you're really looking at that hole, trying to feel, feel the pace, feel the speed, and then really try and get in over the ball. Repeat what you just saw. Something I love about your putting and your setup is it almost seems like you get the toe down initially. How much does that help the strike? It's something I teach my students. For sure. You know, I, I love the whole kind of like, you know, like you say, high hands, yeah. like Steve Stricker, you know, one of the greatest putters probably ever and, uh, you know, for a long time. And for me, what it does, I feel like it kind of locks my wrists in and it kind of helps me, it helps me kind of have more of that big muscle. Uh, putting stroke rather than kind of handsy and armsy. So I kind of feel like if I get my hands high, that locks my forearms in and I try and putt with my upper body a little bit more. So I think it's a, it's a good way to putt. I'm going to set the scene. You get to uh, Las Vegas Country Club and you've got to get acclimatized to the greens. What process do you go through to help with pace, re green reading? Yeah, I mean, so something I do in practice rounds, I mean, it's unusual. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big ball roller. So when I'm in a practice round, I'll visualize some of the pin positions, and I, I'll kind of roll. I'll, I'll roll balls, uh, and I and I write down what I see. Typically, what I, you know, typically the ball will react exactly how I my eye sees the pop. But every now and again, I'll roll a ball and I go, hold on, that did something a little weird. Um, you know, and I'm visualizing pin positions. This is the uh, the party hole, the eighth hole. I'm assuming we're going to have a back left pin one day, so I'm kind of 
I roll and I kind of visualize some of the lines. Uh, and that really just kind of helps me come the weekend. Um, and then I keep, keep a library of these books, my caddy Kenny does uh, over the years. It's sort of like a little putt library, um, you know, of, of rolls and putts that I've hit. And uh, that really helps me dial into the grains a little bit. You know, sometimes when you come to a new golf course, you may be looking for like a general pull of the land. We talked about the grain and the grains this week. Depending on what surfaces, what type of grasses, you know, what the general pull of the land is, there's just many ways to read putts. And on a week-to-week -week basis, you have to decide which it is. Like I say, grain's quite a big this week, I feel like, and uh, I'll continue to really be looking for the grain on the grains to help me read these. And how do you judge that? It's so hard sometimes to, you know, know how much it's going to break, how much the grain's going to come into play. Have you got any tips on that? Yeah, for sure. I feel like, you know, if you read a putt and, you know, you, your eye sees left, right, and then you come to the low side and you look and you see it very dark and you know the grass is coming this way so you've got slope and you've got grain down, going down the slope so you probably have to read a little bit more into that. I had a couple of reads today where I felt like I saw one thing but the grain was slightly the other That's way. The worst, That's the worst. Team, you know, you're like, no. When you see one thing in it, don't yeah, be absolutely Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so typically you have to try and then straighten out your read a little bit, you know, go with the initial pull but know that the grain's going to hold it up a little bit. So. You know, it really comes with skill and experience and just kind of being around the world and seeing different types of conditions, different types of situations. And, uh, you know, luckily I've, I've held a few good putts over the years. Um, I need to hold you, a, US I Open, beat Tiger, yeah, well, you're being modest. <laughs> I, I've held a few okay ones, but uh, I need to hold a few more good ones this weekend so I can try and compete here. And uh, great day for Smash, obviously part of the team, part of the boys, um, you know, pr really happy the way I played today and I'm looking forward to getting back at it tomorrow. Like I say, I felt like I left a few on the greens today and I can definitely uh, see some low scores out here this weekend. Well, we love watching you see you play some really well. So string lines, tee pegs, do you do any drills like that? Yeah, so I'm a round the clock guy. I like, I like tee pegs and uh, Jeff Pierce, who's Brooks Kopka's putting coach uh, right over here, he actually helped me dial in my kind of round the clock drill this week. I Instead of putting to a hole, we just went putting to a tee just to try and just to try and really dial in, um, you know, my, my focus and my starting lines, you know, so six tees around, three, four feet, just a tee in the middle, and really just trying to, you know, instead of making six in a row into a hole, trying to hit that tee six times in a row. So just dial in the, the starting lines, dial in the alignment a little bit. You know, to me, Brooks Kopka is probably one of the best putters in the world right now. and. Uh, you know, I was trying to, I was trying to get some information off Jeff, his coach, which, which is the great what thing about live golf. Go What's what that? did you get, G Mac? Give us some gold. Yeah, like I say, just putting to that tee. They, 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 they really don't use the hole much, from inside 10 feet. Um, you know, putting to tees. Uh, and like I say, I think one of the great things about live is that we get to operate as a team. We get to learn from each other. Being, you know, being around guys like Taylor Gucci, won three times last year. Jason Kokrak, who's a, a world-class player, and, and obviously Brooks, you know, five-time major champion. You're trying to just soak little nuggets from them. You know, obviously, I've been around a long time myself. I, you know, I feel like I know a thing or two about a thing or two, but you're always, you know, this is a beauty, beautiful thing about the game of golf. You're always trying to be better. You're always trying to learn. You're always trying to, you know, pick something up from the best players in the world. And, you know, the, the, the beauty of, of live is that little team element where, you know, you, you just operate, you know, as a team and you try and make each other better. Let's see one more. One more. Let's and see. then, GMAC, very special. We're going to get you to rate some swings quickly okay. afterwards. Okay, swing ready. But let's Done. See, let's see you roll the rock. Okay, let's see. We've got a 10 footer get here. Get the putter head down, line that correctly, shut my lower body down, square my upper body. Oh, he doesn't miss. <laughs> I need to make some more of those. <laughs> <laughs> save them, save them. Right, where is the monitor? We need to rate some swings. Where is the monitor? I want to see another one. The monitor's gone missing. Okay. I need to do a bit of work on these anyway, so I'm happily yeah, happy enough. Yeah, keep going. Here. So another thing I notice is ball position. It is directly below your sternum. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, like we talked about earlier, alignment and setup, you know, where your eyes are positioned really dictates how you align the putter head and see down the line. So, you know, I think everyone's ball position, you know, everyone's a little unique, a little different. One of the great things about putting is there's a hundred different ways to do it. You know, just look around the putting green. So many different ways to do it. But, uh, you know, for me, I like my ball position slightly forward of center. Um, I like my eyes slightly inside the ball. I like to try and keep my head as still as I can. Let that putter head just work. 
That's another bit of gold I teach my students. You throw a dart inside the line, so exactly that. Get your eye line I, I just have never seen a great putter in the world have his eyes beyond the ball. Yeah. To me, it's always on the ball or even on the inside of the ball. So you can see that line better. Right, are you ready to rate some swings? Well, Be uh, kind, uh, okay? Of course, of course. Let's oh, go, here we go. Close. The Supercam 74. Oh, that's, that's not bad. All right. well, a little over the top, but I mean, it doesn't go left from there. This makes it, see, let me see. I like that move, that's a good move. Keep doing that. The face, he's good. More of that. Uh-oh, posture issue here. This guy needs to stand up a little taller. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He ended up nice and tall, but I think he needs to start a little taller, get those hands a little higher. Uh, yeah, okay. Posture, fix that. A little slow. Here we go. Ooh, this, this is an interesting driving wrench. Uh, oh, I'm not sure I've got that shot. I got to be honest with you, Spencer. Spencey hustle. It's a good-looking golf swing, actually. That gives me anxiety. Yeah. Doing it in uh, we don't want to know where this ball landed, most likely. But that's uh, that was on point. That was on point. Oh, here we go. A little lifty in the back swing, but I, I like it. I like it. I got a couple, I got a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old who are, you know, hitting a lot of balls right now. So I, I love seeing kids fall in love with the game. Get after it, get after it. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now. Hit it hard, hit it far, and we'll figure the rest out later. That's kind of what I try and tell my kids. You've got all the gold dust today. Thank you so much for sharing so many nuggets and keep playing great. It's great to have you on. Yeah, no, thanks Rachel. And uh, look forward to having a good weekend. Thank you. Cheers, Jimmy. All right, now we've been talking a lot about the individual's performance today, but let's talk a little bit about what team to watch. Check this one out, y'all. Probably six or seven teams that could, they could win the thing and you wouldn't be surprised. It's okay, look really strong. Every day it was some, someone shooting like five, six on the pod. They learned how to win and they just kept winning. Torque is so deep, you know, like they go one through four as good as anybody. Obviously the Crushers were won last year, extremely solid. The Crushers were what they did last year, I feel like you have to pay attention to. Them. They're the ones on the mountaintop right now, they're holding the trophy. They got their hands on the trophy, nobody else does. You know, the Fireballs are going to be a strong team this year. Having Pooch in there, who's, who played really good in the second half of the season, is going to be a good team. I'm only focused on our team, to be honest with you. That's, that's the only team I care about. What Brooks has done with Smash, that's definitely going to be a team that we're going to be battling out quite a bit this year. Any team that Taylor Gooch happens to be on is obviously a team you got to kind of watch out for. I mean, they're going to be super strong. The Stingers are always a very strong team. They've won tournaments. Louis coming on really strong. Four aces are always going to be the four aces. They've created that name, they've created that environment. Four aces, obviously, with Dustin and them, are always going to be strong in the addition of Harold Barner. They are, I mean, great four players. He really is everybody, right? I mean, it's, it's tough. There's so many teams to be looking for. I mean, I'd say all of them is a safe answer. And here's some more social game time for Aces. You called it. You called it, Jerry. They're, they're <laughs> too tough and too good to lay down for too long. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree with you more. I want to talk a little bit more about today. And, uh, And I want to talk to you more a little bit today about the individual play. Yes. Uh, we had Paul Casey just yes. put on an absolute show. It, it seemed close between everyone, but Paul Casey really just yeah. nailed it today. Yeah, well, we, we, we have a bunch of leaderboard at the top with uh, some sevens and uh, then a bunch of fives and a ton of fours and threes. But Paul Casey's a guy in his mid-40s now who's who's had a tremendous career on the PGA Tour. He's had a tremendous career in team play at the Ryder Cup. And, but unfortunately, between all of that, he's a guy who's extremely fit and has always been in fantastic shape. And it's always the fit guys who gets hurt because he's battled more injuries than, than most players have uh, that have been through what he has. So he's healthy again. I think the Live League schedule really, really uh, helps him to perform his best because there's not as much wear and tear on the body doing this. And there's no doubt he can play that kind of golf every single day. He's got a lot of great golf ahead of him. He even said in his interview to the press earlier in the flash area, my speed's still the same. I might be getting up there in the age a little bit, but my speed's still the same, so there's no reason I can't play the same golf. Well, let's take a look at some of his highlights here. Jerry, I'd love to hear from you about them, but check it out. Here we go. 
Paul Casey, what a day. 12, one. Yeah, 12 T, par three. And there it the, is, it's up, it's in the air. I forget the distance here, but when you see a guy staring at it that long, you know he likes the feel of it. You know he likes the line of it, and that was nearly perfect. It doesn't get any better than that, really, right? Yeah, but no matter how good you hit it, this club has to cooperate. You got to get the putter working in, in order to really take advantage of it. Otherwise, you know, you turn a, a, a good 68 or 69 with a, with a hot wand and then a hot bunker game as he did here at 18 <laughs> into a really low round of 63. I watched him hit that too. There was, he had a member of his team that was, or his group that was making their way around the lake and he, like, he wasted no time hitting it. I think it's like he wanted to get it over with and he just jarred it. Then the big bender here at Look five. At oh my goodness. Yeah. Finds the bottom of the cup. Those are the difference makers. Those type of putts are ones you feel like you should make, but rarely do you make many of them. And he does it again right here at seven. Look at this. Making it look easy. Uh -huh. All right, now that was individuals. Let's take a look at the team leaderboard here from today. Any <laughs> okay. Range goats up top. Uh, Uline shot four under par 66. His score didn't count. That's how good they played today. That's insane. Yeah, Jerry. that is insane. That's uh, that's a nice throwaway score to have. I mean, also what it excites me is just we we have no idea what's going to happen in the next two days. No. And with these scores, anything seems like it can happen. Right. Of course, it's gettable. And then four scores counting on Sunday, those become extremely volatile. We saw it last last week on Sunday for the first time counting all four scores. How quickly things could change. Uh, but the, they're all keeping an eye on it. Make no mistake about it. It means a lot to these guys. Definitely right. a great day for the four aces as well. Great day for the four aces. Uh, who would you say needs to make the most adjustments after watching today? From a is team standpoint, to I mean, Stinger down there at two under is, is just unthinkable. They are such a consistent team. It's so talented. Uh, and and that just shocks me, really. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So obviously Range Goats doing their absolute thing today. Uh, let's look at some highlights from the Range Goats. Check it out. And here they are. That's that's Matthew Wolf, birdie at 13 with the shorts on. Then there's Uline at birdie at 17 earlier in the day with the rain Whoa. pants on, but he took those off later and he has shorts on too. I don't know, they're absolutely nuts to be playing that's in shorts. Beautiful, yeah, I don't know yeah. how they're doing that, but no. they're doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's Thomas Peters. Good. But it was uh, it was a, it was the captain Bubba Watson who hasn't had his best stuff since rejoining Liv after the injury and surgery, and he uh, he's finding it, he's dialing it in. Look at this one right here. He's fun to watch play. I know you haven't watched him play a whole lot, but a lot of guys try and hit the ball really straight. Yes. He can't see straight. He doesn't hit the golf ball straight. Every shot he sees has to curve. He'll stand on the fairway with a wedge or a sandwich in his hand and see a 20-yard draw or a 10-yard slice. I don't know how he does it, but that's the way he plays it. It's artistry. Gotta love that. Bubba actually, uh, he jumped in our show earlier today, our pre-round show. Uh, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> Had a good time with him earlier. And here are some social tweets here. Range goats are absolutely clicking today. Goat gang, I like the goat gang thing. Yeah. I gotta love that. What is a group of goats called? Uh, you know. Is it a herd? A group, uh, I don't know, that's a good question. Let's go we'll with herd, it. yeah. He's, he's nanny goat though, he <laughs> is the king. <laughs> yes. Balling out there, all right. And look at this, range goats. A rocket in Vegas. Yep. I gotta love this. All right, we're gonna take a look back at what happened in Maya Cobra. Those were warmer days for us, Jerry. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. But <laughs> well, let's take a look back at all the action in Maya Cobra. Take a look. Day one of the 2024 Live Golf League is finally upon us. Hold on a second. There's a new sheriff in town. John Rahm is marching with his lead to 13. The wind is in his sails. Relentless. Staggering display today by Waco Neiman. Waco Neiman to continue this scintillating round of golf. 59 for the Chilean. 59? Yeah. Did not see that happening. Let's just say that. Charge is on. Waco yeah! Neiman must be just sensing the footsteps behind him. Wow. 
This is far from done. John Rahm. Money. Money. You know. You just know how badly he wants it. Are you not Spencer's kings? This is gripping stuff in Maya Coba, Mexico. Legion 13 are marching. Okay, looks a ride for another birdie. Legion 13 at the moment are going to win, going away. This is going all the way. John Rahm ends on 17 and 18 with bogey on both. Like we're just a two horse race now. Now has this to seal his first live golf title. Just to throw it away. Yeah, a little firm on that line, and so it continues. We will have the seventh individual playoff. 55 holes can't separate these two. And it's back to the 18th tee we go for a second playoff hole between Neiman and Garcia. Well, he knew the minute he hit it, it wasn't enough. It is getting really dark. A real sense of theater between these two. <laughs> Sergio wants it. <laughs> Here we go. And we go again for a fourth playoff hole. Well, they know every green grass on this hole right now. And right about now, his heart just sank. What a great scene. Well, for the fourth time. This year. Starting. Walco Neiman to win. It just feels awesome. And yeah, I mean, there are, there are golf courts up there. <laughs> and he wins his first Live Golf title. Uh, I hope everybody knows what I feel like I already knew is that, you know, we're definitely a force to be reckoned with. And uh, hopefully this is the first one of many. You know, I can't think of a better way to start my, my pro career. And the only thing I'm worried about is that I'm, I'm going to wake up and this all be a dream. So um, very thankful yeah, you to be here. don't have to worry about that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so pinch me. It never gets old watching that Waco Neiman celebration in Mayakoba and Legion 13 with the champagne in the dark. So legendary. And here are some tweets from uh, a fan of Torque AGC, winner of the Mayakoba battle. Look at that. Uh, Neiman looking like an absolute legend there in that graphic. Did a great job in Mayakoba. Uh, we have a fun little segment called Listen Up, where we mic'd up some of our guys throughout the day. I love this. I think you will too. Check it out. I mean, if it, if, it's, if it stays like this, I think the 54 is good because it feels like it's more down. 27 cover, I mean, as long as, we, as long as you get that thing in the air, I think it should be good. Yeah, just be aggressive on the line. Yeah, just trust it. Yeah, so I mean, we want to see we pitch this 80, that 80's playing 95, just feels like it's dropped a little bit compared to what it was. So I'd definitely, I'd play in 95s, I'd take a bit off it. Be aggressive on the line as well, mate. What? I caught it before and it clasped open and I think it's gone, it's gone bigger. I'll just move it. I don't know whether you I can move it, it though. Yeah, you're moving it right now. I would say it's a one linker. Huh? It's a one linker. 85 front, 90 pin. There's not really much going on around it, mate. It just sits it. Yeah, but I don't, there's only a couple of yards of breeze there. I wouldn't play for anything at the minute. I'd almost play the number, not far off the number. 90 total on the left side of that flag. I mean, it's not a great deal of wind there at the minute, but... Okay, come on, see your shot, mate. And now they, they're heavy as well, aren't they? No, they're not. 
Yeah, All right, awesome. gotta love to listen up. And we have a special guest here, Ben Baller, who joined us in our pre-show. Uh, some would say one of the greatest jewelers of all time has made jewelry for some of the most popular music artists and more, Justin Bieber, to name a few. Yeah. But he's also a great friend of Bubba Watson, <laughs> who uh, you followed along now. today. Is that the case? <laughs> talk, talk about it, Ben. It's funny, uh, Bubba got a chain from me today. And uh, his manager was worried that it might be too heavy. And I was like, no, it's just like, it's like the perfect amount of diamonds. And um, so uh, I was originally gonna walk with Bryson, I guess. And they're like, no, you're gonna walk with Bubba, nine holes. And I was like, all right, cool. And then he was sticking them. Like, GIR is crazy, fairways. <laughs> and after the second hole, he's like, hey man, it's gotta be the chain. And I'm like, nah, man, come on. <laughs> and then he went on like a little birdie run, two, three birdies in a row. And I was like, oh my God. It's the chain. He's like, let's go. And knocking in the putts, knocking in the birds, and then went to the party hole. And it, it was crazy because we were walking in a tunnel, and he's like, hey, how long are you walking? And I was like, uh, nine holes. And he goes, all right, finishes the nine hole, and he's up, um, almost T1, and he was climbing up, and he did, well, he was T1 for a little while. And as we're leaving at the ninth hole, he goes, where are you going? And I was like, I gotta go to another hole. He goes, why don't you stay for a little bit? And I didn't know the, the superstitious <laughs> thing. He was like, no, I'm dead serious. So why didn't you stay? Is it because I you had, had to, some duties to yeah, do? Yeah, I had, I had to do some content. So, and that's my boy, but and I felt bad, but he was running. T he's T3, range goats to number one. So it was like a nice little good luck charm. I felt good about that. You actually had something important to do here with Liv, with some of your jewelry. Tell, yes. tell the fans who may not know uh, what you were here to do today. So today um, I presented uh, three new uh, players, uh, the Liv Promotion Coins. So that was really cool, Kale Jin and uh, Kieran, and they were super excited. They seen them before in Abu Dhabi. I couldn't make it there because it was um, I had my kids' Christmas program during that time. <laughs> but uh, you know, um, I was able to customize their names and laser them, and they were ecstatic about it. So that was kind of cool to see these dudes, you know, come in and, and I don't think they've ever seen, you know, a fifteen thousand dollar, you know piece of jewelry that's you know it's and, pretty crazy and there's a tweet yeah, there we got to look at them when we were over there in Abu Dhabi sorry you didn't make a trip it was actually quite a bit of fun but those are really really cool as is pretty much everything you have made I got a question for you though Ben it's a little deeper than a lot of stuff we're talking about if you don't mind Bubba and those guys all these players are so committed to doing stuff outside of golf to help their community and so much to help kids and and you were an influencer before influencers were are, were influential. You also are, have been a hugely successful business person and a very artistic man as well. What advice would you give young people to who want nothing more than to be successful in whatever their chosen endeavor, be it art, sports, or science, or what have you? What advice has been most influential for your success? I think that one thing that I did is I never followed the pack, and I kind of kind of created my own path. And even though, you know, I just think that adversity is good. Yeah. I think the obstacles are good, you know, and um, one great quote I like is, uh, when you lose, don't lose the lesson. And I try to embed that in my kids, you know, heads and everything else. And if it comes too easy, then, you know, it's not gonna stay for a long time. And I really truly, really, truly believe that. And I think some people, they mistake my age. They think I'm like 36 or 37, you know, and I'm in my 50s now, so. You're what? <laughs> I'm 51, man. Oh my God. Yeah, so. Jay, you look really I surprised call you over kid, there, though, Jay. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, use yeah. a lot of SPF, I use a lot of SPF. Well, what's your skincare routine is my next question now, geez. So, you know, I think um, when when people understand that, uh, you know, basically, I've been putting in grind for over three decades. Yeah. Do you know, so this wasn't some overnight success, and they say every overnight success takes, you know, 10 years, and it's been 30 years, and so it's not like this is, this has been a long journey. Well, you're also a Korean American who played college sports in basketball and football at a time when that wasn't common. I mean, you I had was, obstacles. I was the first Asian American to ever play two sports at my university in history, so that was yeah. crazy. And, and yeah, I don't have the genetics, you know, to be, uh, and it was funny, I remember when I was going on my recruiting trip, they were like, I, you know, and back in the day in high school, you played both ways in football. Yeah. So I was, a, um, I was always a corner, and I played safety a little bit, but uh, I was always a, um, I was a running back my freshman year, then I went wide receiver, and that's where I became, like, that's where this, you know, the, the, where the eyeballs came onto me. And then when I got to college, I was like, I'm 180 pounds, man. I don't want to get hit by these big dogs. I'm, I'm going to do the hitting. So, you know, I felt like cornerbacks had to have more skills. You had to be a wide receiver, except doing it running backwards. Yeah. So I decided to do that, and I think um, it just didn't work out. But the, the basketball thing was, was always a great thing, too. And um, I just had to work. I felt like I had to work extra harder. 
Okay. Now, you some know. people might hear your story right now who are watching, who are just discovering who you are and say, well, how did he get into golf? Now, you explained it a little bit early in our pre-show, yeah. but I would love for you to talk a little bit more about your journey in golf. How did you land here in golf? You helped with music, producing albums that have went platinum, over 20 albums that yeah. have gone platinum. Yeah. You played college sports. You're obviously a very successful jeweler. Now golf, how? Well, like I said earlier, um, I was with a really big sports agency, uh, XL, and uh, they represent Tiger, uh, Max Homa, Justin Thomas, um, uh, Colin Morikawa, uh, you know, some small time golfers like that. And it was funny because they never pushed the golf thing on me. And then uh, again, I said, TaylorMade had reached out, would you like to do a collaboration? And then uh, we did these, uh, you know, 300 gold putters for $700 and they sold out in six minutes. Wow. And wow, I think wow. 90, <laughs> yeah, six minutes sold out. And they're going for like a thousand right now on eBay. And the funny part was, 90% of my fan base doesn't even play golf. So I think they just had them just as like trophy pieces. I was like, no, use them. Wow. So um, I finally uh, decided to play a little golf. And uh, that was uh, May 2022. And in July, I had my first hole in one. Did you really? Yeah. Where at? At Weddington. Oh, wow. And I'll never forget, um, they thought that I was being robbed so the police were called because I was screaming so loud. And these people, I was on hole three, people on hole eight, and they saw me. So when a police came, I was at hole seven, and I was like, yeah, what the hell happened here? Maybe someone got a heart attack. I didn't know what it was. And they said, what's going on? I was like, they were like, we heard screaming and everything. I was like, oh, I made a hole in one. They're like, oh my God, man. So. Gotta love that. So you've been, you've been playing with a lot of stars. You know, you're not just playing with anybody. You, you've had the opportunity to play with some of the best golfers in the world and some of the most famous people in the world. Let's talk about that. Yeah, you know, um, I think my third pro-am, yes, yeah, so my third pro-am, I played with John Rahm, played the Farmers, and we won. So taking home the trophy That's great. at Farmers was pretty crazy. Yeah. You know, that was definitely, that was an experience. And yeah, I've, I've had the, I've been blessed to play with Bubba, um, play with Brooks, play with, um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people, yeah. I, you know, even on the, like during the off season, you know, uh, Siwoo Kim invited me out to Dallas and went out to play Byron Nelson with him and, and, um, I actually, he put 28 times and I put 27 times. He's like, what the hell? You know, he shot a 68 or something though. So, was, <laughs> you know, but, uh, yeah, I've got to play with some really, really amazing people a lot. Like, you know, I mean dozens of pro pro tour players well look at that ring there uh what is what is the process in creating i mean don't give away your secret sauce or anything ben but uh, well the basic process is one we get the idea of the ring two i create a hand wax mold once the mold is there the mold gets um you know it gets melted down and turned into cast it into into uh gold okay and once it's in gold we drill diamonds I mean, we drill holes, okay. and then from the drilling holes, we set the diamonds, right? Everything gets set. Then from there, we do a high polish finish, and depending on what kind of increase, like that ring, look, if you look at the championship rings, even behind DeChambeau's name and Crusher's, we made sure the logo was exact, even the little skull, and then behind that, I used the dimples of the golf ball as a background to really make it extra special. So what, what is the creative process? Are you are you weighing in with some of the guys? Are you getting some input from them? Or So like, let's say for instance, Gordon Ramsay. He's not gonna sit there and do every single thing, right? He'll lay down the foundation, right? and then you got the people doing some work, and then you'll come in and do the finest, final polishing, you know what I mean? Like even Dr. Dre, when I worked for him, you know, he'd lay down the, 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 the original track, then someone comes in and starts playing a piano. He'll direct them, do the con you know conducting and stuff, and then come in and be like, all right, let me wrap this all together, and that's what I did. And then basically, um, you know, um, I think I was telling the story to the promotion guys. A lot of people don't know that um, I took one year off of jewelry completely took a year off. I didn't make any jewelry. I didn't want to. I was uninspired wow. and I was thinking about retiring. I just was playing golf two, three times a week. I was going everywhere playing golf and my comeback was to make the Lift Championship rings. Wow, well, I want to talk to you more about your relationship with Bubba. I got a lot of questions. Jared probably does <laughs> oh, too. Yeah. And speaking of Bubba, we're going to take a look at some off-season access with Bubba Watson. Check this out. Everybody's excited. That's what everybody wants to do. That's what, what impressed everybody about live and coming here so they can be a team. And it goes back to high school days, goes back to college golf. You dream about being a GM or a franchise owner and then you start doing it. As you know, me and you've had many hours of late night conversations trying to work this out. And then when Taylor said to me about the 10 year process, that's what got us thinking about, hold on, he said 10 year process. 
well, why wouldn't we go get this 24-year-old that's on top of the world? In the same headlines of Victor Hovland and Morikawa, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a big piece. I think that man is good, and he's, he's young. There's movement, there's trades, there's new people coming in. Just like other sports, there's new, old, uh, there's people switching teams. That's the thing about a small roster, right? You only got four people. People call you Matt, Matthew, Wolf. Wolfie, like, I've said it. Like, I want the team to get off on the right foot here, so what did you want? And he told me essentially, like, his mom calls him Matthew, Matt's fine but Wolfie is what mo is probably the most common. So, yeah. That's what I'm just so you know, he's giving me permission to call him Wolfie. Yeah. Yeah. Bubba Watson in the range goes, them boys look good. And who's this guy right here, Ben? <laughs> that's your boy, talk about yeah, it. Man, that's, <laughs> Where that is this was, from? That's from uh, Rich Harvest Farms, live Chicago. He uh, was on my podcast. And it's funny, I've done over 400 episodes of a sh my show and that was the best interview I've ever done. Wow. Really? Ever. That's yeah. a big statement on 400 episodes it of the was. people you have on. Oh, I've had some massive people. Okay. Yeah. But I didn't know that we shared a few things. Some of the anxiety and thoughts that the anxiety got so bad, I thought that I was going to die, I have a heart attack or something. Just other wow. things that we had shared. And I think that uh, we connected really close there. And it was just a great, I felt like Barbara Walters. <laughs> it was just amazing of interviews. It was crazy. That's amazing. So I want to talk to you a little bit about you have a golf nickname. I want you to tell the story why you have oh. it and who gave it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so my coach at the time, Ron Del Barrio, he's a um, he was a tour player for a little bit. It's uh, I always played better on the back nine by like five to eleven strokes. Okay. So they call me back nine baller, back, back nine, nine baller. Ben. You know, back so, nine Ben. I yeah. love it. So yeah, that that was uh, my nickname, and it was like funny. I was like. I'll take it. And no matter what, to this day, last 45 rounds. Still? I, yeah, yeah. no matter what, it's always been. The it's, other day I shot a 48 at Trump, and I, sh I was like, yo, this is crazy. I might not break 100. <laughs> then I end up shooting a 38 and back two over. Wow. It's better yeah. to be a closer in any sport. <laughs> I feel <laughs> Absolutely. All right, all right, let's take a look at your yeah. swing, oh, this, is, this is a bad drive, but I'm, uh, let's let's Let, let's, let's look at this here. Let's take a look at uh, how the coach is doing with you. Yeah, Ooh, this setup one's is bad. awesome. Okay. Yeah. Very good action going back. Oh. You could get a little bit more shoulder turn, but it's really it. cold that day. And, but you know what though? It was still 247 center of the fairway. Well, Wasn't then, bad. That looks good. It's, it's, you're no, it's you're excellent, doing your thing, Ben. Good, good lag. Sure. Really good lag. Held the angle late. Yeah. The funny part was it still made the center. And uh, what's his face went OB, so I was like, all right, well, we're in the. <laughs> I made I uh, 12 or 14 fairways yesterday. That's what you said earlier. That's yeah. that's awesome. And these are yeah. not big wide fairways. And no OBs out of you. No OBs. Okay, that's impressive. Oh, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Very impressive. Ben, who would you say your your favorite celebrity is to golf with? Oh, that's gotta, a good one. Yeah, like yeah. who who who's the most good time? Favorite Robert loves celebrity. his golf. Uh, Justin Bieber for sure. Justin Bieber. Yeah, for sure. You got to elaborate on that one, Ben. Yeah. What? Why? JB. Um, JB. JG's been one of JB's. Uh, his best friend that runs company with him is from Jupiter, so he's like been like with him. And, and, and funny thing was Justin was with my coach a long time ago, and I think that we just kind of forget about everything and learn a lot about ourselves on the golf course. Wow. A lot of parallels with life there, and like the integrity part comes in there too, right? Yeah. And you know, it'd be like. There's for four, right? I'm like, hey, bro, don't check me, man. You know, like, it's funny, but it's, 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 it's a good time. Man, so cool to meet you. Really cool. Thanks for all thank the work you, you do so it, it, for, for us as well. It's really so Baller, cool to thank meet you. Thank you so much for joining us. Jerry Foltz, you you're so a stud. Much. You've been absolutely phenomenal. And thank you guys for watching us here at Club 54 Post Round Show. I'm your host, Christian Crosby, and we're closing out here from Las Vegas until, of course, tomorrow. We'll see you at the pre-show. Have a great day. And stay tuned. Peace. <laughs>